What's up, everybody? Funny Guy Timmy here for some more microphone reviews from my good friend Jake Lester. So I wanted to do a shootout between these two microphones and probably a couple other shootouts between them because I know someone's going to ask and I just wanted to go ahead and be ready. And so I tried very hard to get both of these microphones capsules like pretty close to the same spot. It's kind of a weird setup. Uh, now looking at them through with light coming through them, the capsules seem to be about the same size. Which is very interesting. I don't. I, I think there's very few microphones that I have that I've actually done shootouts between where they've actually been like the exact same size capsules. Most of them were like just slightly smaller, just slightly bigger. But these ones seem almost exactly the same, which is impressive. So right now you're actually listening to me on the e, uh, 7E T2. And we have it, um, no pads, no negative dB, just cardioid. And this, of course, is just a cardioid microphone. And so I'm going to be switching between the two. This is just to give you guys an idea. These microphones basically are, this one is 500 pretty consistently. And this one is probably like a 250 microphone. I think that's its average. You can, might be able to get it for 200. You, but I've seen it in places where it's been like 280, 270. So it depends on where you get it. So this one's basically twice as much as this one. But they do sound similar, and so I wanted to do a good shootout. Now, I can say that the, the shock mounts are very different. They're very, very unique shaped and looking shock mounts. They're both... This one's small, and this one's gigantic, which is a huge shock mount. Uh, don't get me wrong, the Blue Yeti shock mount is huge. It's like a sombrero. But what we're going to do is we're just going to give you some silence, let you listen to this, and then we'll be switching over. All right. And yes, again, both of these are on the exact same settings on my Yamaha G uh, MG10XU. I have the gain set to half the levels set to three fourths and no compression, no EQ, nothing like that. And they're both set to the exact same setting. So now let's switch over to the Rode microphone. Alrighty. And now we are listening to the Rode NT1, not the NT1A, NT1. And again, levels are exactly the same. No compression. I actually, of the two microphones, if I had to suggest or recommend something, it might be this one because, first of all, this one's 500 So really only spend it, spend the money on, on the SCT2 if you really know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing and you know how to get the best sound out of this microphone, that would be the best choice. But if you just want something that's like well-rounded and that's a good starter mic or even a career mic, I think this would be totally fine as a career mic if it sounds good on your voice then I think this would be a good buy. Also, the 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 kit that it comes with has literally like one of the best pop filters I think I've ever used. It's insane. As well as a pretty good shock mount. So and being half the price, it'd probably be the one that I would recommend. But if you had the money to spend and you knew what you were doing and you had a little bit more like a bassier voice and maybe you were also wanting to do singing and like more than just voiceover, I might recommend this one. Just because I feel like if you're doing more than just recording voice, flat and clean, then and you and you're gonna be using it on like maybe a guitar or a drum or something like that, and you're planning on doing you know, changing your volume singing at higher pitches or lower registers or whatever, this would give you a lot more options. It gives you a lot more means of recording. It gives you more settings. It gives you negative dB. It gives you roll off. It gives you all kinds of stuff. So it has settings that if you needed the settings, you definitely recommend this one. But just for voiceover, I'd probably go with the NT1. Also, there's less noise. There's less noise, to which I will now let you listen to. That is just insane to me. 
This microphone is half the price of this one, but this one seems to have a little bit of noise. Now, don't get me wrong, these are secondhand. These have been loaned to me by a fellow voice actor, so maybe this one he's just owned longer and it's had a little bit more wear and tear, or maybe he got it secondhand. I don't know the history to this microphone. But due to the fact that when I received it and he gave it to me, it was dust-free and just well-kept, I highly doubt that's the case. These both of these microphones seem like they've been they've been taken care of very well, so I think they represent their sound very accurately. So, yeah, I mean that's that's basically all I really have for you guys. I think really the only def deciding factor is, are you going to use the features or are you not going to use the features? That's really it. That's really it between these two microphones. I don't think the noise floor is too high to be usable. I, I don't think that this is so bright and so sibilant that it's unbearable. Actually, it's quite the opposite. Again, like the pop filter. So, there you go. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Totally fine. Subscribe if you're new. Again, huge thanks to Jake Lester. I hope I've been saying that right this whole time. I've done like three videos and I've been saying it that way. If not, just let me know. Just crucify me down below. Don't crucify me. Just... Tell you some shit down below. It's totally fine. Uh, if you guys want to see any other microphones tested or want to see any other videos or have any questions or requests, leave those down in the comment section below. Both of these microphones will be in the description. Go check them out if you're interested. And until next time, peace.